In order to perform properly, bearings must be kept in good operating condition. In this part, we'll look at a maintenance procedure for a split journal bearing on a water feed pump. We'll see how to disassemble the bearing, inspect it, and then reassemble it. This pump contains two thrust bearings in addition to the journal bearing. Plant procedures require all bearings in the pump to be serviced at the same time, but we'll focus on the journal bearing. The bearing surfaces for this particular journal bearing are in the form of two removable inserts. This feed pump has been locked out, tagged, and isolated from the system. The pump has also been drained of fluid. To begin, the mechanic removes the bolts from the top half of the bearing housing. Then he removes the guide pins that help align the two halves of the housing. After all the bolts and the guide pins have been removed, the mechanic removes the top half of the housing and sets it aside. In this example, the thrust bearings are removed first before the journal bearing is disassembled. Once the thrust bearings have been removed, the mechanic removes the bolts that hold the two shells of the journal bearing together. He then removes the upper shell of the journal bearing from the shaft. In order to remove the lower bearing shell, the shaft must be raised slightly to take the weight off of the lower shell. While the shaft is raised, the mechanic slides the lower bearing shell around the shaft and removes it. After the bearing has been removed, the shaft is inspected for high spots, scoring, or discoloration. If there is deep scoring, the shaft should be remachined or replaced. After the mechanic inspects the shaft, he inspects the bearing inserts. He pays particular attention to the lower insert because it typically bears more load. He checks the inserts for scoring, high spots, wiping, or discoloration. The bearing inserts are a matched set. This means that if one insert has to be replaced, then both are replaced. After the bearing has been thoroughly inspected, and any necessary maintenance has been performed, the bearing can be reinstalled. When this is done, it's important to make sure that the bearing is properly fitted to the shaft. One way to do this is to check the clearance between the bearing and the shaft. The mechanic will use a micrometer and a T-gauge to check the total clearance. First, the mechanic measures the diameter of the shaft with the micrometer. Then he positions the T-gauge inside the bearing. The mechanic sets the T-gauge to the distance of the inside diameter of the bearing, and then he measures the T-gauge with the micrometer. To obtain the total clearance, the mechanic subtracts the diameter of the shaft from the inside diameter of the bearing. If the total clearance is too great, the bearing inserts are replaced and the test is repeated. If there is too little clearance, the bearing is either replaced with a bearing of the correct size or else it is scraped down. After the clearance check is made, the journal bearing is ready for reassembly. The lower shell of the bearing is installed first and then the mechanic puts the upper shell in place. Once the bearing shells are properly positioned, the mechanic installs the bolts that hold the shells together. Next, the thrust bearings are installed on the shaft. Then the bearing housing is reassembled, and the housing bolts and guide pins that secure and align the housing are installed. Finally, the mechanic tightens the housing bolts, following a pattern specified by the manufacturer to make sure that they are tightened evenly.